Hello everyone, this is Brad from iBuyPower. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna be going over a method to quickly stress test your PC to ensure that its major functions are all working properly. This is a helpful thing you might want to do if you've recently made a hardware change or you wanna check system stability once every several months or every year to make sure that the system is still in you know good working order. This guide is going to be focused on a few tests that we think are very effective and user-friendly. It's not necessarily going to be the most thorough set of tests, uh, but we think it'll give you a lot of bang for your buck. So uh, the first thing you will need for your PC, of course, is a few pieces of software. All of the software is free for personal use. Uh, it generally has a professional license uh, if you want to use it for work. Most of them are portable and will run offline. Um, so if you're having an issue with your PC where you can't connect it to the internet, um, they can all kind of work for that. So the first piece of software you'll want is Hardware Info. This is a very powerful piece of monitoring software. It can read almost every sensor on the PC. The main benefit we like versus some other monitoring tools is its ability to record data. If you're tracking an issue and you don't have time to sit around and wait to spot the issue when it occurs, uh, you can just use the recording feature and kind of go back to it uh, later. There are a couple other a little more lightweight pieces of software that you can use to do monitoring that perform similar functions, feel free to use your favorite. This is just the one that we recommend. So next up, we will grab Prime95. This is sort of an age old favorite. It's still one of the best ways to apply a heavy load to your CPU. After Prime, uh, we will get a program called Cinebench. Uh, the current version as of the filming of this video is R23. Um, generally, you're looking to get the newest version of whatever's out there right now. And then lastly, we will grab two GPU stress tests. Um, so the first one is Fermark, uh, and the second one is Unigen Superposition. The first thing you're gonna wanna do after downloading all these pieces of software is familiarize yourself with the locations of important data in hardware info. Um, for the purposes of this guide, we're mostly concerned with temperatures, power usage, and frequencies. So go ahead, launch hardware info, click the box for sensors only, let that load, and then start looking for the sections about your CPU and graphics card. For the processor, you should find the core and package temperature stats. Um, we're going to mainly be looking at package temperature for this guide. You'll also want to find package power. Uh, this represents the total power being fed to your CPU. And lastly, locate the CPU frequencies or multipliers, which may appear differently depending on your model of CPU. You're gonna to wanna to compare these values to the advertised speed of the processor. For the graphics card, you're gonna to wanna to look for temperatures, fan speed, power usage, frequency, and GPU load. We recommend kind of collapsing all the other categories to keep the important items in view. The first set of tests we're gonna be running are what are known as power viruses. Their job is to draw as much power and generate as much heat as possible. They're not really useful for testing real world stability, but they're great for making sure your power supply and cooling system are properly spec'd. So it should go without saying, but save all your important work and be prepared to not be able to use your PC for roughly an hour uh, while you're running all of these tests. To start off, we're gonna launch Prime95, choose the Just Stress Testing option, and then select Small FFTs and hit Go. So Prime95 Small FFTs hits the CPU harder than pretty much any other task, significantly more than most typical users' programs would. You should see your CPU temperatures and power usage skyrocket as soon as you start the test. For most modern high-end CPUs, this load is actually going to be enough to max out your cooling system. So don't worry, your CPU is perfectly fine running at or near 100 degrees Celsius for the duration of this test. You're gonna wanna wait roughly 15 minutes or so for your cooling system in case to become heat soaked and the temperatures and power to reach equilibrium. If you have a custom liquid cooling loop in your system, you may need to extend this test to about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much coolant is in the system, just because it will take longer to heat up all of that liquid. Basically go until you stop seeing temperatures rising. After you reach equilibrium, record down your temperature and power metrics. If you're not using the record function in hardware info, I would hit the reset high low button and let hardware info observe for a minute or two so you can get good averages. If your CPU does thermal throttle, you may want to record both peak and average power since peak power will usually show up before you reach thermal equilibrium. Then you're gonna wanna stop Prime95, give the system a few minutes to cool off, and after that, we're gonna do basically the same thing for your graphics card. So that program would be Fermark. 
So you're gonna launch Furmark and hit the burn in test button. Try to immediately record down the power usage that you see uh, and the frequency before the card starts heating up. That's gonna give you an idea of the maximum power and boost frequency on your graphics card. Then do the same thing, wait for about 15 minutes for the card to reach equilibrium and record down uh, all the same stats, as well as you're gonna want peak temps and uh, fan speed. Unlike your CPU, your graphics card should not hit a thermal throttle point. At this point, you've got a pretty good idea of what your CPU and GPU's cooling systems can handle alone. The next test is to run both at the same time. This test is mostly helpful to stress your system's power supply, as such a workload is relatively unrealistic in day-to-day -day use. So before starting Prime95 again, uh, we recommend going into the settings and reducing the thread usage count by two. Uh, this is because Furmark does need some CPU processing power to run, and having Prime take up all of it may lessen the load on the GPU and impact the total combined load. So 15 minutes of this again, um, record all the same values as in the individual tests. Uh, most of what we're looking for here is just that the PC stays running, indicating that the power supply is properly sized for the hardware of the PC. Afterwards, we're gonna let the PC cool down again and we'll move on to the stability and performance tests. So the first program we're gonna wanna use to test performance is Cinebench. This benchmark is designed to check your system performance in Cinema 4D rendering. It's also used a lot to test CPU overclocking or undervolting stability, but if that's what you're interested in, you probably skip this entire guide anyways. <laughs> Just like with Prime95, uh, you're gonna want to watch temperatures, power usage, and clock speed. Hit the multi-threaded performance test button and watch the squares fill over and over for 10 minutes. After the test is done running, you should get a score. Um, you can Google the Cinebench score for your CPU and see how close you get to a typical result. Um, just be careful when you're looking at results. Since this test is used by overclockers, it is very easy to find a result that is much higher than factory performance. Searching for the name of your processor plus review and Cinebench R23 or whatever version you're using will usually get you a good result to compare to. And then last up, we're gonna test your GPU's performance with Unigen Superposition. An alternative to this, if you have access to the internet, is 3 d Mark. We feel that Superposition is a better stability test, whereas 3 d Mark is more widely used as a performance benchmark. The main reason we're using uh, Superposition for the purpose of this guide is due to the fact that it can run offline. Um, the free version of 3 d Mark does require an internet connection to run. So go ahead and jump into the Superposition benchmark and select the highest available graphics setting preset that does not max out your graphics card's VRAM. The benchmark is on Rails and it will run on its own until complete and then report a score. As with Cinebench, you can compare your results online to see if your score is up to par. So now that we've run all of these tests, what should you do with that information? At a high level, if the PC remains stable and running during all the tests, then that means the major functionality of the PC is still good to go. If your performance scores were within 10% or so of what you see in the review scores you see online, then it's a good sign that your PC is also performing as it should. If your performance is lower than expected, you can use the hardware info stats to hopefully reveal why. Usually, this will result from some kind of power or thermal throttling. If your CPU was reaching temperatures near 100 degrees C during tests, the board will throttle back performance to avoid overheating. For especially high-end processors, particularly the Intel Core i9s and new Ryzen 9s, they may reach a thermal throttle point no matter how good your cooling system is, since they are designed to continue to turbo and use up all available thermal headroom. However, due to the diminishing returns on performance at these high power levels, the performance results should still be close to advertised scores. Probably the most important thing uh, to do after all of this is to record the results and keep them somewhere handy to refer to later. A year or so down the line, or whenever you decide to change hardware or clean out your dust filters or whatever, it may be helpful to run these tests again and compare to the previous scores. Well, that concludes our video on how to quickly benchmark and stress test your PC. Um, if you have any comments, maybe some pieces of software uh, that you think we should be using instead, go ahead, leave a comment, hit us up on Reddit or on Discord. Uh, we can take a look at it and make, maybe make some revisions to this guide. Um, otherwise, uh, hopefully you have a great day and we'll see you next time.